Oh, g'day, it's Charlie here. Um, got up this morning and decided to do a few experiments um, with an audio amplifier, just sort of getting a bit of a thinking about um, which direction to go for for the uh, the audio amp for this particular radio. Um, trying to find something which um, is going to draw sort of um, no more than that sort of 10 milliamps. So that's sort of what I'm going for. So I did um, three things today, I um, or three circuits I compared. Um, this one down here, which we'll look at in a sec, it's based around the NE5534, uh, and also two um, simple common emitter Class A amplifiers, um, two configurations, one using a emitter current of 1 milliamp, and a second configuration using 10 milliamps, um, and just using the same rules of thumb that we've seen uh, in previous videos, setting the emitter voltage to be a tenth VCC. Um, looking for a nice stiff voltage divider biasing here, so 11 times the base current through here and 10 times the base current through there. So, doing our same sort of maths. Um, noting too that um, we're operating down uh, in audio, so very close to DC. So, this um, transistor here, the beta, um, I just took that the median between the minimum and maximum value, so I just used 150. So. Um, yeah, um, not perfect, but you know, close enough for uh, for working it out. And based on that, came up with those standard values there for the one milliamp configuration, and then the ten milliamp configuration. Um, those were the values there. So basically, just bred boarded those up, um, and then did some comparisons between these two here and the one down there. Um, as expected. Um, I was always going to have a problem because um, when I'm out tramping I use these uh, little earbuds here. Um, these earbuds are 32 ohms each. Um, I run them in parallel, so uh, for mono, um, giving a, um, so 32 in parallel with 32 gives 16 ohms. So I'm trying to drive a 16 ohm load and that little speaker there too which I sometimes plug in um, is also a, a 16 ohm um, speaker. So, as expected, um, with the two, or this very simple amplifier here, um, and, I, and, and I know this was, well, okay, full stop. Um, as expected, um, with that 16 ohm load put across RC, um, it totally destroyed the gain. So, if you recall, the gain for a common emitter um, amplifier here is negative because it's inverting. Um, big RC, or our, our collector load, divided by uh, RE, where RE is made up of little RE, which is our resistance inside the um, transistor, uh, and big RE, the portion of big RE which is unbypassed. In this particular case, it's fully bypassed by 10 microfarad capacitor, so we're just looking at little RE. Um, as expected, uh, 16 ohms in parallel with, in this particular case, was 5.6, uh, is always going to be something less than 16. So that, that totally destroyed the um, the gain of that, um, to be expected. Um, and exactly the same down here. 16 ohms in parallel with that 600 ohms um, destroyed the gain. Um, which is why we see um, things like audio transformers that transform that high impedance down to low impedance. Um, which is something which we could have done here. Uh, could have gone for, say, an emitter follower stage and taken the output across. Um, the emitter resistor, um, or gone for a, probably a more appropriate push-pull type amplifier, but my aim was always to use, in this particular comparison, because I just want to try it out, um, the simple Class A amplifier, uh, because I need to minimise the number of components to keep the overall size of this amplifier small for the small real estate I got for the radio. Um, and I knew too that this one over here, which I have used in the past and has worked well in the past, um, has essentially the same number of components as this amplifier here. So arguably this was sort of the standard I was looking at. Um, so that was interesting to, to, to try out those two amplifiers. Um, and we'll just set that aside at this stage. So this amplifier here, um, it's an op amp as we, as we mentioned before. Um, it's been configured as a, an inverting amplifier, so the input is coming through um, our 4.7 coupling capacitor microfarad through RI um, and into our inverting input. The non-inverting input is fixed at half VCC 
fire two 33k ohm resistors. So just a nice high resistor there, or two resistors to minimise um, our current going through here, and setting that to half ECC, and of course from an AC point of view bypassed. So the gain for this type amplifier here uh, is minus, because it's an inverting amplifier, RF, which is our feedback resistor, divided by RI, our input resistor here. Uh, another thing to, to note too, um, because of the high input impedance of the op amp, um, the input, if I was to look into here, the input resistance as seen by the preceding stage works out to be RI. So in this particular case, this amplifier is going to be following our product detector, the ADE-1, and the ADE-1 would like to be uh, terminated in 50 ohms. So I'm notionally going to set that to the closest standard value, um, which will use 56 ohms. So that's what we're going to use. We're going to fix that at 56 ohms, and then we'll play around with RF to get the desired gain um, for the value of the input coming in. Now at the moment, um, that's a bit of an unknown because I don't know at this stage how much the preceding stage is going to present to this audio amplifier to then work out how much gain I need to produce uh, an audible signal um, on those headphones. But we can look at the general principle at the moment. So here we have uh, that amplifier as we just mentioned. Um, the feedback resistor RF is represented by this um, switch box here, so I can switch in various values of resistor, and then RI has been notionally set using this one to, as we can see there, the arrow is pointing to 56 ohms. So we'll leave that fixed, and we can play around with this. Uh, we can observe how much current this amplifier is drawing, and we can also observe um, both the input uh, and the output on the oscilloscope. So if we plug that in, so I'm just now connecting up the SIGGEN. So the SIGGEN just mentioned before is um, sitting on 700 hertz and at 50 millivolts, so 0.05 volts. Uh, and currently drawing 12.9 uh, milliamps. So I don't know if you can hear that, um, but that's certainly um, loud and arguably no problems at all, that's, that's certainly arguably too loud um, in the ears there, so we could look to drop down a little bit that um, feedback resistor, so it's currently sitting on 3000, so 3000 ohms divided by 56 ohms gives us a gain of 53, a straight out voltage gain of 53, so in dB that's 34 dB, so we could look to drop that down to say 2000, so bring the 2K, turn off 3, so now we've got 2K, we can see our current there has dropped down to 9.8 and still got um, heaps of volume uh, in that particular earpiece there. So we could drop that down to say 1k. So now I've got 1k in there. We now drop down to 6.6 .6 milliamps um, and still got heaps of volume there. So that's 1k. We could go 4, 5, 6, 7. Still heaps of volume. So crumbs, you know, how, how low do you want to go? So we could try five, so 500. Um, you know, we're drawing five milliamps there and uh, stacks of volume in the earpiece. Uh, just crank up the old, oops, easy. Uh, dual. So that's, that's our output trace. Um, outputs on 0.1 volts um, divisions and, you know, we're getting pretty hairy there now. So that's 50 millivolts, so... Um, 50, 50 millivolts per division, so as expected it's roughly uh, one division there. But uh, we're getting pretty low now in the input um, and just getting a little bit too noisy there. But uh, more of interest just to, to keep an eye on the output, that uh, if we were to go to some ridiculous gains, like that, you can hear it straight away, that we're going to have some distortion. So there we now we definitely need to start dropping down dropping down our gain to, to get that back into a linear area. So there goes a good difference there. So there we've got um, 4K, 4, 5, 6, 7, and dropping it down there. So uh, that's the only reason why I've got the scope there, just to keep an eye on uh, any clipping from overdriving it. So as we just said there, so, so um, 3 and 2 makes 5. Um, 
that's still presenting oodles of volume, like I say, in the earpiece. They're only drawing about 5 milliamps. So that's probably about all I'm going to do on this. Um, that's satisfied my curiosity from comparing this to um, the two amplifiers here. Um, I fully acknowledge that there are better ways of designing a, a BJT based amplifier uh, suitable for driving um, a low impedance load um, but again what I'm after here is simplicity and something um, small that I can fit into this radio because you know as I said a couple of times now uh, from a real estate point of view I'm quite limited so I've got to be pretty pretty careful on, on what type of circuit I, I'm making um, and as you see on the scope there uh, this hop amp here is, is certainly it's a, it's a low noise version it's the P version um, and um, certainly lots of good linear gain um, to to bump up that signal there so now it's just like I say a bit of a wait and see we'll board up the rest of the circuit um, and we'll just work out how much gain we're going to have to produce um, out of here based on um, what the rest of the radio is going to present to us so anyway, I'll, I'll knock it on the head there because I'm starting to ramble. Um, 73 is all, and uh, any questions, please sing out. Otherwise, we'll continue melting some solder.